I'm Suzanne Henriksen, a researcher and storyteller by trade and a world explorer, drink local enthusiast by heart. I'm traveling the world to celebrate and share the people, the process, the stories, and the innovations behind craft alcohol. And I can't wait to share our amazing finds with all of you. So let's get drinking, crafty cask style. So Vara is all about um, the Spanish-American experience. Uh, the word Vara means cane, or rum, and it, it represents uh, the Spanish commitment to the pueblos in New Mexico of uh, sovereignty. So the Spanish king gave each of the pueblos a cane of sovereignty. Then in 1863, President Lincoln gave a king of sovereignty to the Pueblos as well. So they have these two bars and their sacred items in the Pueblo culture that represent sovereignty. And uh, so everything of the bar is about the Spanish, uh, Mexican, American influence in this region. So um, we um, uh, select some very special wines from Spain. Uh, we, we also produce wines here in New Mexico. We produce wines in California. One maker is uh, Robert Lundquist. Coupe uh, is uh, it's his company, uh, Central Coast. And so some of the wines that we have are Central Coast in the US, and some are in the So between Bob and Rock, with years of experience, and me, the guy who started in his garage, uh, seven years ago, um, I'm responsible for the spirits part of it. On all of the Vara products, we've got, of course, the crown and star. That's our, that's our trademark, is the crown and star. If it's got a highlighted crown, this is a Spanish product. Uh, if it's got a star, it's an American product. So the Paso Uno, first pass, or one pass, and this is basically um, what the Spanish would refer to as an Olandas brandy. So it's an immature brandy. Uh, back in the day in Spain, it was when the Moors conquered Spain, they said, you can't have wine, wine's bad. But we'll bring our Alembic stills over and you can make spirits and we'll call it medicine. Mm -hmm. And so the Spanish started turning wine into brandy. And after the Moors left, they found that their biggest export was to Holland and it was this immature brandy. And it's basically done first pass on a on an alembic still, and it is done from New Mexico grapes. So it's New Mexican Chenin Blanc, uh, Malvasia. There's actually some Zinfandel. So different okay. wines go into the uh, the pot when we distill it. So not meant to really be a sipper, yeah. but should have some of those great characteristics mm -hmm. and just something as uh, as a mixer, you know, in the place of a vodka, but with just a little bit more. Yeah, flavor, it's flavor lovely. So rum is what I started with as a distiller. So this is that's not common, I don't think, because working with molasses and sugarcane and sugar is kind of difficult. is it is difficult. Yeah. It is difficult to source, uh -huh. but it is also much easier to ferment. That's but, a lovely white rum. Yeah. I'm, re I'm a really big fan of white rums that have enough character and kind of personality that you actually can sip them. But it's rum. Yeah, it's rum. Yeah. This isn't designed as a sipper. It goes extremely well. It was designed to go into rum cocktails, but still have rum characteristics. Yeah. Yeah. I want, I wanted to express that molasses characteristic in the spirit. And so many of the white rums you buy now are so very similar to vodka. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's, yeah. that's something I want. Yeah. Very nice. Our gin is a very unique gin it is a Mediterranean profile. So a little bit more citrus, but we've also got some sage in there and we call it a high desert gin. Mm -hmm. It's done on a great big spirit. So it is not a it is not a grain based. But we bottle it 88 proof. Oh. Yeah there is something unique going on there. It's not, it's not your London dry, it's not yeah. a kicky in the teeth. 
more of an old Tom style, but with that Mediterranean flair and that sage adds a little bit to it. Yeah, that little touch of sweetness and the citrus, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. lots of layers of citrus going right. on there. And a lot of people pick up the, there's also star anise, so a lot of people will pick that up okay. as well. But, yeah. but this is an Alembic brandy out of Spain, mm -hmm. um, aged for a minimum of three years as a, as a Reserva, it's a Solera. And we're starting a Solera program here, so we're using some of this along with our own products. Uh, we're doing a rum Solera, so we're doing some really cool stuff with Solera. And this is basically the product that I perfected the aging with. Um, so this is done with a dark molasses, um, otherwise known as medium or refiner syrup. Um, and so when we source this stuff, we have to get it in ridiculous truckload of quantities. Sure. So um, we make quite a bit of it. Um, uh, but fortunately, it's doing well. This took uh, Judge's Select Medal at the Texan. So, so yeah. I have a question. I'm um, confused on timelines, maybe. So you sure. perfected the aging process with the rum, but you started Taylor Garrett for whiskey. Well, yes. Right? Yeah. So but this is this is garage work. Right, okay. and so, so we're technically getting, under so, Taylor Gary. Correct. Yeah. That. So I, I developed this, you yeah. know, and earlier. earlier, and then when I came into Barra um, with the idea of I was going to do a standalone Taylor Garrett, and um, some of the investor groups I would come to said, "Well, you ought to go talk to these guys because they're doing this, 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 and this." And so they felt like it made it. sense to kind of have a split and the so, whiskey. Exactly. Moved so it over when I came okay. in, I just moved the moved the run over. Gotcha. The bar, okay. okay. It just made more sense. Sure. This is some of our Solera. Uh, we've got uh, Solera for brandy. Uh, we're aging our own brandy using the process to kickstart it and then putting that into barrel and okay. letting it Solera age. And then we're also um, doing the same with uh, light rum. So we'll have our dark aged rum, we'll take the light rum, we'll age that just for a bit using the process, then we'll throw it into Solera and create more of an oral, uh, a gold rum. We are floor to ceiling with nice. barrels. Uh, we'll be emptying these out over the next couple of days as we do a lot of bottling. So this is mostly wine. Uh, we've got some experimental um, sparkling projects going on. This is all around Brue. He's working on our sparkling. Cool. Every once in a while, he'll come in and open some of this, and we taste some stuff that's only a few months old. That it's like, wow, when this is 18 months, it's going to be phenomenal. Are you guys doing Cava style because of the Spanish roots or uh, something we else? Are doing, we are doing Cava and, of course, uh, uh, Taylor Garrett. Taylor Garrett and Vara are still separate but partner companies. You know, we definitely want the brands to be different because Taylor Garrett now is whiskey. It's the American sure. experience. Right. Um, it's actually named for my two kids. I'm a, I'm a pilot for American Airlines. Oh, okay. And so um, aviation is my background. Obviously, uh, I was an Navy pilot. So aviation, speed, acceleration. And then it's named for, I was a late starter, I've got a five and seven year old. So my little girl is Brooke Taylor, she's five, and my seven year old son is Tyson Garrett. So cool. that's where yeah. Tyson Garrett comes from. That's great. Yeah. All right, so. Beautiful bottle. Number one is the Taylor Garrett whiskey. It's a bourbon mash, and that's about as much as I'll say about bourbon mm -hmm. on it, because I really consider this more of an American whiskey. Um, it's got, of course, a lot of bourbon characteristics to it. But it is it is designed as a high ride Nashville. I like that kick, mm -hmm. um, not particularly sweet. Um, so it's a 65 percent corn, 25 percent rye, and 10 percent malted. Uh, it's a little bit higher in Nashville in, in, in the rye than most, and a little bit higher on the body. A lot of Yeah, on the nose, I definitely would have guessed this is a rye rather than that. Right, so it's got a little bit a little bit higher rye. So this is basically just a swap um, of um, the corn and the rye okay. in the mash bill. So it's a 60 percent and 10% corn and the rye. So. Really, it smells a little bit like brandy, though. Like there's a little apple-y, like, spice coming through. I got like a real, like, coffee. Mm. Like a light roast coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Um, that one I get a little bit more of the spice. I get the earth. I get an earthiness to it, which yeah, is sure. what I really like in the rye. I, I like that earthy. I'd say of my favorite every day is this is this is my go to look at this is I like the rye. It's got that rye spirit. Uh, the, yeah, the rye spirit. It's got the rye spice. It's got that earthiness to it. That's that's kind of what I think we're looking for in the rye. But the the corn kind of offsets it kind of nicely too. So a little sweetness up front, but then you really kind of get into that earthiness to the rye. I, I don't, it's not smoky, but there's that. Well, it's a little extra. it's a little darker. It's a little. Uh, a little heavier toast on the wood, and so you're getting those those notes. Okay. So as you as you cook oak, believe it or not, as you bake oak, it will its its flavor profile will change, and there's very definitive temperature points at which that happens. Uh -huh. And so you can toast it in charter, vastly different. Toast it in charter, two different uh, things. That is kind of the idea of Taylor Garrett, is that because I can get to market quickly. Um, I really want to kind of push the envelope on some new flavor profiles, yeah. and so there's some things that I've been working on and that we nice. kind of have in the, in the works. A couple of years ago, uh, we had this Alambic still with a line arm that went straight to this old style condenser. Um, I thought in order to increase our productivity and to make a little bit higher quality experience, we need to add a column. So we added the column in, so we can run this either as a straight Alembic still, or we can run it through the column. And typically what we'll do is, for fermentation, for mashes, we'll keep water in the still, we'll pump it into that big tank behind you, which is just a mixing tank, it's got a couple of paddles in it. Uh, right now we've got a bunch of uh, dry vermouth that's going to be bottled this afternoon and we'll pump that hot water into that and pour milled grain into it. All of our grain comes out of southern Colorado. Okay. So we'll pour the milled grain into it and then we'll add it to our fermenters which are behind you over here. Currently we don't have any grain fermentations going on but I basically modified totes into fermenters, put chilling coils in them. They're uh, they're like beer keg chilling coils. So I put those in them. We run glycol through them and keep the whiskey mashes at the right temperature. So where is the magic? The magic happens back here, and it's all behind everything because otherwise it's really pretty cool to see. Um, so this is. This is all about aviation. So you've heard about the black box mm -hmm. on an airplane, right? Sure. Well, does it make a lot of sense to paint it black? No, <laughs> no can't find you it. Can't find it. So black boxes on airplanes, like that, orange, orange, right? Painted bright orange. Yeah. So this is our black box. <laughs> Very cool. So all the magic happens in there. Okay. So I've got you know a couple of aging um, vessels in there with all the electronics associated with it, and and basically this is our black box. It's the model PFM01, pure effing magic. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> pure so, effing magic. That's it. it. So, uh, yeah, all, all of this on the outside is nothing other than fluff. It's just. <laughs> oh, these are the gauges cool. and the switches oh, yeah, aren't yeah, attached to anything? Don't mean anything? They're actually old airplane gauges. Okay. So, that's fun. Yeah, it's just, it's just for fun. In fact, uh, do these still work? No, I unplugged them. <laughs> they used to light up. It'd be fun if like, you flipped one of them and it's like, boop, boop, boop. Yeah. <laughs> Seat cover. So yeah, so it's got the, you know, but this is exactly how these things are painted. This was just, it's, it's cosmetic. It's yeah. just a black box. That's pretty fun it's though. It's a black box painted. <laughs> That's where the magic happens. Cool. You're not going to show us the magic. I am. Damn it. <laughs> Sorry. Can we get a picture of you in front of your pure effing oh, magic? Oh, sure. You can get a picture.